I've had too much caffeine. I read every comment. When I say that, I actually mean it. I've been asked an enormous amount about... Uh, get on there, you little sucker. Um, Christian mysticism is like the best metaphysics. And there are a lot of people that watch my nature and metaphysics videos that are Christians. And uh, I'm a Neoplatonic Platonist. I really don't believe in labels because they're meaningless. People either understand what's going on or they certainly don't. And that's regarding countless things, whether it be uh, episteme, ontology, metaphysics, natura naturans, or mother nature. I, I absolutely don't care what people believe in. It's uh, none of my business, and I certainly have no interest in swaying people. You know, even though I make videos a recommendation, I guess making a recommendation, of course, is swaying someone in a certain sense. But, you know, I, I have no vested uh, interest in that. The fact is that nothing is known except for the modality of the knower. Um, you say you have two people looking at one building, for example. One's on the, the illuminated side, and the other one's on the shadow side. One has a completely different uh, um, experience, set of ex experiences growing up, and their vocabulary is completely different, their experiences are completely different. Not only that, they're looking at the building from the shadow side. Looking at a private club from the outside, you know, you could develop countless thousands of uh, hateful ideas and whatnot. Uh, for example, about a club you're not allowed into, as opposed to the person that's on the inside. So, the world is full of antinomies. Plato, uh, all of the Greek Platonists, as well as a lot of Christian mystics, spoke about this because nothing is known except the modality of the knower. But I'm going to end the logomachy here, which is a great word everybody should know. Logomachy is basically a professional way of saying lip flapping. And uh, I've been asked to make a recommendation on the best Christian mysticism. Well, I can do that. Um, what people, and by the way, whatever you do, don't ever call me an atheist, by the way. That's an insult. You can call me fat, bald, tattooed, and ugly, but don't ever call me an atheist. Please don't ever do that. Um, true atheism, by the way, in case you don't know this, is metaphysical atheism. You can leave out the God or no God stuff, and yeah, not interested in that, and uh, get to the heart of the matter. Uh, the definition, the original definition found in Philippus 29d, is uh, of atheos is a reference to ontological substrates underneath phenomena. It has nothing to do with God or no God. It has to do with metaphysical substrates. In other words, the hand underneath the sock puppet. Uh, genuine definition of atheism is metaphysical. You look that up too. I think there's even a Wikipedia entry for, me uh, for metaphysical atheism. Whatever you do, don't ever call me an atheist. But, you know, a Neoplatonic Platonist, specifically, I'm a, a, a perennial a perennialist in uh, the uh, tradition of uh, like Ananda Kitish Kumaraswamy and uh, don't ever say Rene Guénon, please. He's, he's not that wise at all. Um, Julius Evola, except for Julius Evola's politics, like, hey, whatever you do, you know, I'm a huge uh, fan of Julius Evola's uh, writings of metaphysics, but no connection to his politics. You know, he kind of had uh, a lot of radical views there, but a traditionalist, specifically, Sophia Perennis. But once again, these are just words. But I can make intelligent recommendations regarding a Christian mysticism. So let's get to it, right? There's only three. Well, there's, there's a few more, but they're not so super hot. You know, it's kind of like a Porsche is really hot until you put like a million dollar Lamborghini or a Ferrari next to it. So I'm going to mention the three hottest of the hot. And one of these authors, his works are incredibly prodigious. I mean, they are... Oof, they're, they're shattering. I've got most of them been translated into English, and if you stack the books up, eh, they're about, I don't know, five feet tall. There's, there's a lot of books in the works of Jakob Bima. This is only one. This isn't my top recommendation. Actually, I just grabbed these off of the shelf. Here's a uh, crude portrait of Jakob Bima. You can say Jacob Bima, B-O-E-H-M-E. -E. Basically, it was a German uh, goober. I could say that, you know, backwoods, uh, you know, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, just like, a, you know, no higher education, which doesn't mean anything to me anyway. Insight is insight and wisdom is wisdom. It has nothing to do with higher education. You know, basically a German goober and he had a mystical insight one day where, you know, the weight of uh, 
uh, the weight of the underworld. We could say the underworld. We could say uh, of uh, counter space, the weight of uh, the spiritual, the transcendent. Whatever word you want to pick doesn't make any difference to me. Hit him like a ton of bricks, and everything that flowed forth from his pen, the end of his days is some really good stuff. Um, I uh, had a, a chat with uh, a famous Hollywood actor who's a, um, a good guy. I don't want to mention his name. He's a huge fan of Jakob Burma. This is a Mysterium Magnum. Um, the Threefold Way of Christ. Uh, there's a certain percentage, about 15 to 20 percent, of the works of Jakob Bima, translated from the German, 16th century German mystic, are available uh, for free online. The rest of them are in cheap copies. You know, the original sets are countless thousands of dollars. Um, the first English translation, that is. Uh, Jakob Bima was born in 1575 in the town of Gürlitz. By the way, this famous Hollywood actor, this little town in Gürlitz, which is basically like a little podunk town in Germany, they kept getting all these uh, big donations every year, and they, and they had one uh, addendum attached to the monetary donation to the town, as that the money had to be spent on, you know, town restoration, you know, nothing frivolous, and they couldn't figure out who donated all this money. It was like, well, that was that Hollywood actor who's a huge, huge fan of the works of Jakob Bima. So this, I'm not doing this in any particular order, so I don't say Jakob Bima is the first, but definitely the top three, okay? Definitely the top three. So if uh, you're a Christian and you really, really, really want an insight into genuine Christian mysticism, okay? I can't recommend high enough the works of Jakob Bima. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, this particular one was written in 1623. I have, I think I've got all the works of Jakob Bima. I digitized most of them too, and that took a really, really long time. Let me tell you what. So Jakob Bima, absolutely fascinating. This is only one volume in a three volume set. I have all three. I mean, you should be able to find uh, the download links to these, be able to get a hold of them. Like a new copy on Amazon, I couldn't believe it, of just volume one out of the three volume set, and this is the best English translation, of Meister Eckhart is uh, by uh, Walsh. You can type this in on Amazon. Uh, they have used copies for like 55 bucks of volume one, and I'm sure you can find some cheap used ones on eBay. This is uh, Sermons and Treaties, volume one. Meister Eckhart is, uh, I think, 13th century, 1375 to something. 13, anyway, 13th century um, uh, uh, mystic, uh, Dominican theologian of the, the Magnum, uh, Summum Bonum, the absolute pinnacle of German uh, Christian mysticism. This is it. You know, if you really want something that will knock your socks off. And I can always tell what people know by the stuff they recommend you read. It's like, I don't need an IQ test. I don't need, it's like, what's the best stuff out there? What's the best stuff you recommend to read? I mean, this is it. Um, this, this is, let me be very, very succinct. And this is like top five or top three of uh, my favorite the contemporary author who died in 1947. I was friends with his son, Rama P. Kumaraswamy, that of Ananda Kitish. Kumaraswamy, this is top three, a fave of his. This is it, Meister Eckhart. This is a three-volume set, like I said, translated by uh, uh, Mr. Walsh. I forget the publication date on this one. There have been many uh, reprintings. I um, mean, yeah, I paid $60 back in the day for this three-volume set. Um, you should have no issue um, finding a, a good used, a beat-up copy. Yeah, this one's 1979. Um, yeah, this is the uh, fourth, fourth edition on um, this one. Yes, yeah, the fourth. Anyway, three volume set. Uh, volume one's the biggest. Number two is nearly this big. Uh, the third volume is pretty small. Man, Meister Eckhart, this is such, such good stuff. Really, really, really can't praise it high enough. And the third, I don't have it here. I've got several digital copies. I've talked about it endlessly in countless other videos. Really is my pick for number one. Not that these are any less awesome. Anyway, I made this video because a lot of people ask, what are the books you recommend? You know, I'm a Christian, you know, Christian mysticism. I like to stay within my circle. That is the Perifesian. Yeah, Perifesian. 
Oh my goodness, John the Scot or John Scotus Erigina. You can type in Erigina, type in uh, Perifisia, and you could type in the division of nature. Yes, it also goes by that, the Perifisian. How do you spell that? Everybody say, how do you spell it? P-E-R-I-P-H-Y-S-E-O-N. Let me do that one more time, the Perifisian. P-E-R-I-P-H-Y-S-E-O-N. I've digitized a couple translations of the Perifisian. The best is uh, the uh, five-volume set. Uh, those are out there digitally, thanks to somebody. I don't know who, but... <laughs> You're welcome! <laughs> oh, man. And uh, whether you be a Christian or not makes no difference to me. Reading the Perifisian, if a child, and I have to agree with the contents, the, how about the contents are the highest intellectual value. Just reading the contents is like three-dimensional chess. You will think, but I've had hundreds, there's no exaggeration, by the way, since I've been talking about the Perifisian for years. I've had hundreds of people literally email, like, oh my God, I'm like a third of the way through the Perifisian. I'm halfway through, I'm all the way through. Man, I can think better, I think more clearly, I can debate better. I mean, I can see through people, I can see through things, and my mind has become some sort of analytical super machine. Um, people kind of say stuff roundabout like that, and it's like, I told you so. I mean, you, I mean, life is short. Life is too short to read garbage. So, you really think I would, like, recommend trash? <laughs> Maybe some of you thought that I would, but I don't. I got the good stuff, baby. I got the good stuff. I have a magical gift for finding the really good stuff. It only takes me 30 seconds or less. Usually, sometimes I take a minute to determine whether a book is any good or not. Because I've known about Meister Eckhart for ages. So Meister Eckhart, Jakob Böhme. Oh my God, he wrote so much. There's just not a chance in hell. And some of his stuff is a little more dry than other stuff. But there's just not a chance in hell that you would not be happy reading the works of Jakob Bema, Meister Eckhart, or those of John the Scot, or John Scotus Eregina, if you will. He is a division of nature, i.e. the Perifisian. That should be recommended reading, just to make people's minds razor-sharp, analytical, insightful, transcendent. It's, it does something to you. Not in a bad way, a good way. So, that's my recommendations for top three. Christian mystic authors to read. There's just not a chance in hell that if you have half a brain, if you read any of these works, you're going to disagree with me. Now, some of uh, Jakob Bema's works, like I said, are a little bit drier than others, but this stuff is it's pure gold. Pure gold. Here's one I just randomly opened to. This is uh, the 22nd chapter of uh, the Mysterium Magnum um, of the... A uh, excuse me, of uh, original actual sin and the awakening of God's anger in the human property. This stuff is just, it's just, it's metaphysical gold. It just, uh, it makes me scream inside in a good way, not bad way, like a horror movie, the good kind of scream. It makes me scream inside just thinking about the time that I've spent reading these works. And you would feel the same. Trust me. Thank you so much for watching. And this video was a viewer request for spots for top Christian mysticism. Highly worthy. The highest worthiness of reading. Thank you so much. If you like these videos, any donation is warmly welcome. You can tell me how much you hate them. Whatever makes you happy. Thank you. Lux Everitas. Wisdom is its own reward. Remember that.